I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son Podcast. You know, we do this podcast six days a week, and we do this for a reason. We do this so people can see and understand and, and get a grasp on just how much God loves them, just how much He cares for them, just how much He's for them. And and I want to thank you for tuning in. Hey, listen, I want to ask a favor. I want you to uh, share these podcasts on your social media. You know, people people have no idea that that God is a good God, that He's He's for them, not against them. There's millions upon multitude, millions of people that walk the face of this earth today that don't know that. They do, do not know that. And the Word says, the Bible says that the the goodness of God that is what leads men to repentance. And and I want to get the word out about this. I want people to see and understand that 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 they can count on him. He's not a tyrant. You know, I lived for years thinking God was a tyrant. I really did. I th- I thought he was a some bipolar, just crazy old man that sat on his throne with a hammer in one hand, a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for me to mess up. But that ain't God. That's religion. And and it's 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 sad to say, but it's some of his religious people. Now they're out they're out to jump you every every chance they get, but but that's not God. And this podcast is done every week for that reason, for for to let people know and understand and realize that God is for them. Oh, I thank God that He's for me. He was for me when I was out in the world, backslid, away from him, out of his will, because I didn't know what I know today. And and we want to spread this word, spread this good news throughout the world that we live in for people to see and understand just how much God is for them. People don't realize that. And and it's a shame. It really is that, that people have an outlook that, 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 you know, God is just a just unpleasable. That's not God. That's not God. But I, like I said, I want to ask you to share these these uh, podcasts on your social media. Share them everywhere you go. I mean, people are being set free all over the world because people like you share these podcasts. They're free. Don't cost anyone anything. All they have to do is 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 tune in and download them. There, there's there's hundreds of them now. We're working almost, we're getting close to a thousand podcasts. And it thrills me to be able to say everything that on this podcast is free. Oh, I thank God for that. And you know why we can do that? Because we have faithful partners that partner with this ministry to help us do just that. To give these the, God's word away free of charge. To give these podcasts away to anyone that'll listen. I want to openly thank all the partners of the Prodigal Son Podcast. Thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return on everything that you sow into God's kingdom through this ministry, through this podcast, helping people see and understand that God's a good God. Glory to God. Share these podcasts on your social media. You know, I do these prayers every time I do this podcast for a reason, because I want to, the world to know what Paul wanted the Ephesians to know, that God was for them, have their eyes open to his love and his mercy and his grace and his goodness, have their spiritual eyes open to just what God wanted to do in their lives. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you'll understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. 
God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that every day of my life he opens my eyes that much more to his love, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness. And that is my earnest prayer for you today, that he opens your glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light, the vessel that you would have me to be, so you can shine through, shine through me, to show this world just how good you are. Lord, I thank you. And I praise you for all you're doing, all you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. You know, this week we're talking about speaking God's truths. Now, I want want to talk about somebody today today that uh, spoke, David spoke the truths he knew. And and let me let me let me uh read that. I want I want to read the uh the it's first Samuel seventeen thirty four through thirty six, I think. Hang on just a second. I'm punching it up here. And yeah, and it says David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God." Now, I've talked about this over and over on this podcast, but this story just winds my clock. And and I mean, David stood before a king and before an army as a boy, as a boy, knowing, knowing what God had done in his life in the past. And, and I, there's not a doubt in my mind that he knew what he was about to do just in the near future in his life. That's the reason I read Mark eleven twenty two yesterday. Have faith in God. You know, Jesus told the disciples, he said, have faith in God. Mark eleven twenty twenty two. He said, he said, have faith in God. That's what David done when he when he stepped before Saul and told him, said, hey, look, hey, the, uh, the God had has uh, delivered me out of the line or the out of the uh, grasp of the paw of the lion and the bear. And he said, this uncircumcised Philistine will be as one of them are. He said, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to defeat him today. Now that's speaking the truths that you know. David knew that. David knew that. He knew when he walked out, when he walked up and seen this whole army being defiled, he knew in his heart what he, what he could do. Through God, he he walked out of that. I walked out there with all confidence. You don't hear one bit of doubt in these in these this story. And read the first chap for, uh, or the seventeenth chapter of First Samuel. You'll you'll get a grasp on just how much 
this young man had, how much faith he had in God. And, and that's what, you know, we're talking about speaking our faith, speaking the truths. And, you know, we talked about that man yesterday. And, and, and next week, when I go back and get a good report, I'm going to tell him, say, now, now every time that something comes against you, 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 uh, you quote God's word, you, you read God's word, you speak God's word over that, over that issue. And then I said, don't you, don't you waver from it. Don't you wait, don't you allow the devil to make you doubt, but you stand in it and you'll see things change in your life. What did we talk about yesterday? About Mark eleven twenty three said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe what he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. That's what David done. That's what, that's exactly what David done. David stood there before a defeated king. Saul was defeated. He had been defeated every day for over 40 days. In this, if you'll read this, you'll see what, you'll see what was taking place. Uh, The Philistine was coming out and defying that army every day. It's, it's in the 16th verse, 1 Samuel 17, 16. It says, and the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. He went out there and provoked them 40 days. He said, come out and fight. And nobody would go. Nobody would go. It took a, 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 a shepherd boy, a boy now. I'm not talking about a, a seasoned warrior. I'm talking about a boy. He walks out before that, before that army and saw that giant defy the armies of God. David knew who he was. David spoke who he was. David stood before a king and said, if you'll let me go out there, this, this uncircumcised Philistine, he said, this man, this giant that does not have a covenant with the God that I have a covenant with, he said, he'll fall today. And he said, he said he'll be just like this lion and this bear was years ago when he, when 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 this uh when they came against me and and took the 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 lamb out of my foal, he said I grabbed them by the beard and beat their brains out, and that's what he done with with uh with Goliath. He ran out on that field and he told him said you're mine, you're mine. He stuck his hand in that in that pouch and took one of those stones out. And when he turned loose of that stone out of his sling, I can just see God slapping that stone and driving it up into Goliath's forehead. He spoke what was about to happen. I'm going to tell you something. God moves for people that speak faith in his word. God moves for people that, that stand on his word and, and, are, and refuse to be moved. He moves for them. He does what he says his words going what he says his word says he's going to do, and he stands on that. And I he wants you to stand on that. He wants you to speak what you know to be true. And I'm telling you what the tr- the the world the world is speaking a bunch of lies. They I'm telling you they're speaking doubt and fear and unbelief. And if it's doubt, fear, and unbelief, it's a lie because God's word is true above all opinion. And anybody that wants to stand up and, and disagree with what this book says, I don't, want any, I don't want anything to do with that conversation. Why? Because I'm not going to let that doubt, fear, and unbelief rub off on me. Uh, David went out amongst a whole group of people that had doubt and fear and unbelief running out of every, every orifice of their body. They didn't, they didn't know what to do. They did not know what to do. But a young boy that was keeping his father's sheep went out and looked at the situation and said, I can remedy this. I can remedy this because I've got a covenant with Almighty God. I've got a covenant. He's watched after me up until now, and today he's going to watch me. He's going to watch after me while I kill this giant. He said, I'm going to kill this giant. I'm going to remove his head and take the shame away from Israel. And he did. He did. What did we talk about yesterday? 
said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what was David's mountain? It was Goliath. He said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. David stood up and told him, said, I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to kill him, and remove the shame of Israel. I'm going to do what I know that I can do through my God. I have faith in God. He had faith in God. And he spoke that faith when he stood up before a king. And then when he walks out on the field, battlefield, he said, he looked at the giant and he said, today, today, I'm going to take your head. Today, I'm going to defeat you. And it wasn't long after that, that, that giant was laying face down and with his head being removed with his own sword by, by a shepherd boy. A shepherd boy that had faith in God and spoke his faith in God. There's not a doubt in my mind. There's not a doubt in my mind. There's not a, there's not a person on this earth that could not do that if they had faith in the one that wrote these words. There's not a doubt in my mind. There's nothing that you can overcome in this world that we live in if you will have faith in Him, have faith in God, have faith in the one that is is doing His dead-level best to get you to believe His Word through this podcast. God wants you to understand that. He wants you to see that, hey, He's for you, not against you, and He'll back you up just like He did David. Just like he did David, when David walked out there on that battlefield, he walked out there without anybody, anything other than a sling and five smooth stones. And he took one of those rocks and throwed it at that giant. And I'm gonna tell you something: there had to be, there had to be some, some, uh, some, some big, big intervention there. Because if you ever throw a rock hard enough to to cave the front of a man's skull in. No, you've not. I don't know that anybody ever has other than David. And guess what? How did he do it? God done it. Why? Because he stepped out on faith in him. Like I say, I can just see him. I can just see him taking taking his hand and smacking that rock when David turned it loose. And God, God burying that rock up in that giant's forehead. And that giant falling, falling before a defied army falling and watching him die right there in front of them and watching a young man stand up before a defied army and give them their their confidence back because he had, I promise you, Goliath had beat the confidence out of them. They all would stand in fear of him every time he walked out the door. But David gave that back to them. Why? Because he spoke what he knew was true. David spoke the truths that he knew, and he knew without a shadow of a doubt that God had had saved him from the lion and the bear before, and he knew that he's going to save him from this giant. He is going to allow him to, to kill this giant, to kill this giant, because this giant stood in defiance, in defiance of the armies of Israel, and he knew without a shadow of a doubt he had a covenant with the God of the army of, that, of, the army of Israel, and he stood in faith on that covenant. Glory to God. I'm asking you today, are you speaking God's truths over you, over these, over these mountains in your life? Are you, are you looking at situations in your lives and saying, what does God say about this situation? Not, not, not what does man say? What does circumstance say? But what does God's word say about this situation? I want you to know this. I want you to understand this. If you'll get this mindset, you'll see things change. You'll see, you'll see things being overcome in your life. How? Through faith in his word, through faith in him. Now you may be, you may be listening to this podcast and saying, I don't know. I don't know where to even start. I'm not born again. I've never been saved. I don't know what it's like to have has Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Well, I've got news for you today. That's the easiest thing in the world to do. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. 
It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again, people. That's all it takes to be saved. That's all it takes to open the door and walk through it into God's kingdom. And then you can start speaking the truths that you know over the situations that you have. And God's Holy Spirit can guide you through His Word to find the answers for those questions that you have in your life. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. Let Him change your life like it's never been changed before. I promise you, if you'll do that today and get in His Word and allow His Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you, there is nothing in this world that can that can overcome you. You can be confident that God is on your side. Allow Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life today and watch Him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. I want to hear from you. If you've got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need Him to do in your life. If if you need healing, I want to give you scriptures that you and I both can agree on that you are healed in Jesus' name right now. I want to hear from you. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. If you've been born again, listen to this podcast, send me your testimony. I want to hear it. I want to hear what God has done in your life. I want to hear what He's doing in your life. Get in contact with us. Glory to God. If you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do. And that is to give His Word away, free of charge to anybody that, that will listen to it on, in this world. Anybody in the world can download this podcast. All they got to do is, is, is do it and listen at it. It's free. And partners, you're helping us do that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into God's kingdom. Glory to God. If you're not a partner of this ministry, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do today to sow into His kingdom. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.